In the ever-evolving theater of modern warfare, fighter jets aren't just machines, they're game changers. And let's be real, the turbocharged competition between nations to develop the best is nothing short of breathtaking. The heated showdown between Russia and Ukraine has seen many of us, popcorn in hand, comparing the aerial gladiators of both sides and their heavyweight backers. Flying high for Russia is the Su-57 fighter jet. Meanwhile, in Ukraine's corner, with NATO in its corner, the Eurofighter Typhoon soars. It's like an aerial version of a classic duel. But here's the million-dollar question, which one steals the spotlight? Time to roll up our sleeves and pit these jets head-to-head. -head. When we flip the pages of their history, the Eurofighter Typhoon was the early bird, kissing the clouds before the Su-57. But get this, the Su-57 is Russia's solo project, crafted meticulously by the maestros at the Sukhoi Aviation Company. Making its grand debut in 2010, it hit the production line in 2019, and by 2020, it was already painting the skies. Now, let's shift gears to the Eurofighter Typhoon, a masterpiece born from a symphony between three giants, Airbus, Bay Systems, and Leonardo. This jet made its first curtain call in 1994 and didn't waste any time jumping straight into production that very year with its maiden operational mission in 2003. And here's the twist in the tale. Despite their age difference, the Su-57 punches in at a slightly advanced weight class. While the Eurofighter Typhoon flexes as a fourth and a half generation fighter, the Su-57 boasts its credentials as a lean, mean, fifth generation machine. When it comes to fighter jets, think of them as airborne gladiators. The bigger they are, the harder they hit. Taking center stage, Russia's Su-57 is a giant compared to the Eurofighter Typhoon. Let's break it down. The Su-57 stretches a whopping 66 feet in length, spans 46 feet in width, and stands 15 feet tall. On the flip side, the Typhoon, though no pushover, is 52 feet long, 36 feet wide, and a little taller at 17 feet. Bigger dimensions give the Su-57 an edge in the weight department, tipping the scales at a hefty 77,000 LBs during takeoff, while the nimble Typhoon taps out at 52,000 LBs. Size does set the stage, but the Su-57 also packs a punch when it comes to flying stats. Its bulk allows for a more generous fuel storage, a staggering 22,700 LBs of it. In comparison, the Eurofighter Typhoon holds a mere 8,800 LABs. What's this mean for range? The Su-57 flaunts a commanding 2,175 miles, boasting a strike distance of 932 miles. In contrast, the Eurofighter stretches to 1,802 miles, with a strike distance of 863 miles. And, oh boy, the Su-57 isn't just a marathoner, it's a sprinter, too. Both jets can zoom at Mach 2.0 or 1,327 mph. But thanks to its dual Saturn AL-41 F1 afterburning turbofan engines, the Su-57 unleashes a whopping 33,000 lbf of thrust. The Eurofighter, propelled by twin Eurojet EJ-2 100 afterburning turbofan engines, generates around 20,000 lbf. More thrust means quicker acceleration, so if they were in a high-speed chase, it's likely the Su-57 would leave the Eurofighter eating its contrails. Speed is thrilling, but stealth. That's where the real magic happens in modern aerial combat. Picture fighter jets as ninjas in the sky. The key mantra? 
Strike first and strike deadly. Enter Stealth Tech. It's the art of being invisible while keeping your opponent in the crosshairs. And folks, in this arena, the Su-57 and Eurofighter Typhoon are worlds apart. Decked out in the latest in Stealth Tech, the Su-57 is like a phantom. Its sleek design is packed with broad angles, flat planes, and razor edges that laugh in the face of radar waves. Then there's its skin, a special composite cloak that's essentially radar kryptonite. But the star of the show? Its sensors. These bad boys use thermal tracking to sense the heat of nearby objects, eliminating the telltale ping of radar signals that could give away its position. The Eurofighter, in contrast, plays a simpler stealth game. It's got a design that cuts radar reflection when gunning it, and a crafty S-shaped duct that tones down engine rumbles and warmth. But radar-absorbing paint? Nope. Advanced thermal radar tech? Absent. When it comes to stealth, the Eurofighter's toolkit seems a tad basic compared to the Su-57's. Why the gap? It's all in the blueprints. The Su-57 was envisioned as a jack-of-all-trades with a stealthy edge, while the Eurofighter was whipped up chiefly as a strike force dynamo. When you picture the Eurofighter, think of it as a sky samurai with a singular focus. Assault. It's tempting to wonder. Could its arsenal outshine the Su-57s? Let's unpack their aerial combat chests and find out. When we're talking about armaments, both these beasts are decked out and ready to dance. Air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground missiles, and even high-impact bombs. Check, check, and check. But here's where things get interesting. The specs of their missiles. In the air-to-air -air category, the Su-57 banks on the R-77 missile. This bad boy can soar an incredible 120 miles and blaze through the skies at Mach 5, or a mind-bending 3,806 miles per hour. What makes it a reliable sharpshooter? The passive radiation homing ability, letting it lock onto and chase targets using its high-tech radar. The Eurofighter's choice is the AIM-120 AMRAM. A bit shy in comparison, its range taps out at around 99 miles and speeds up to Mach 4, or about 3,036 miles per hour. It's ace up the sleeve. The mid-course update data link control system. This means even after firing, folks back at the command base can steer the missile. Shifting to air-to-ground combat, the Su-57 pulls out the Keech-59 Mk-2 missile. Its impressive stat card reads a range of 180 miles and speeds of 671 miles per hour. Tailor-made to decimate enemy lines, this missile comes packed with an explosive, shaped charge fragmentation warhead. This causes a devastating chain of blasts. Meanwhile, the Eurofighter comes swinging with the Taurus Keeped 350. And this missile is no joke. It can travel a jaw-dropping 310 miles. What makes it a bunker's worst nightmare? The Mephisto Warhead, a German brainchild designed specifically to crack open military bunkers like a walnut. Breaking it down, both the Su-57 and Eurofighter aren't just armed, they're walking arsenals, fully deserving of their reputations as agents of destruction. Yet, when the dust settles and you weigh the two, the scales tip in favor of the Su-57. If they squared off, the Eurofighter might find itself in a pickle. It's not just about the firepower, it's about who gets the drop on whom. And given the Su-57's combo of speed and stealth, it might just take the first and last shot, sending the Eurofighter spiraling. Eurofighters. Oh, my God.